Shalom family, shalom. I'm coming to you guys with another video. Um, this one from the title is going to be Are African Americans Moors? Um, especially with this thing going on in the new uh, about these this Moorish group, Rise of the Moors. I don't know if you guys heard about that. I think it's very interesting that I'm finding all of this out right now. Okay, so let's talk about this. I was recommended to check out my ans my true ancestry, I think it is, and it um showed a lot. So I want to talk about this. I just want to read y'all a few things before we get into it. Now, my test showed that I was mostly Yoruba, okay? So as I'm sitting here reading about the Yoruba people, um, it also showed that I was Moorish. But as I'm sitting here reading about the Yoruba people, this is what it said. I mean, it, it, it tells us that they was Moors. Okay, listen to this. So it's saying, the migration of the Yoruba people all over the world has led to the spread of the Yoruba culture across the globe. Yoruba people have historically been spread around the globe by the combined forces of the Atlantic slave trade um, and voluntary self-migration. Their exact population outside of Africa is unknown, but researchers have established that the majority of the African component in the ancestry of African Americans is of Yoruba and or Yoruba-like extraction. <clears throat> it says in their Atlantic world domains, the Yorubas were known by the designation Nagos or Nago, Terranova, Lukumi, and Aku, or by the names of their various clans. So let's just go down because I'm not going to read all of the, everything. I just want to point out some key things that it's saying. <clears throat> it says between 1831 and 1852 the african born slave and free pop populations of salvador bahia surpassed that of the free brazil born creoles meanwhile between 1808 and 1842 an average of 31.3 percent of african born free persons have been nagos yoruba between 1851 and 1884, the number had risen to a dramatic 73.9%. Other areas that received a significant number of Yoruba people uh, and are sites of Yoruba influence are Puerto Rico, St. Lucia, Granada. Now, keep in mind, because it was also a place called Granada in Spain, I believe. Santa Margarita and Belize, British Guyana, St. Dominique, now Haiti, Jamaica, where they settled and established such places as Abiokuta, Nago, Head, and Port Moore, Port Moore, and by their hundreds and other parishes like Hanover and West Moore Land both in western jamaica leaving behind practices such as itu from itutu the yoruba ceremony of atonement among other customs of people bearing the same name and certain aspects okay now let's go down again it says genetic studies have shown the yoruba to cluster most closely with other west african peoples yoruba people are largely found within the e1 b1 a1 subclade of the EM2 haplo group along with the U, the Ga, and the Bimelech, Bamelech, peoples of West Africa and Cameroon. More recent genetic studies have also found the presence of West Eurasian admixture in Yoruba populations around 8.6 percent Eurasian DNA has been found in modern Yoruba populations. It says the Eurasian DNA possibly comes from the ibero Morugian. Talking about the Moors, okay? An ancient North African group from which Yorubas get 12.5 percent of their ancestry from. Their DNA was most likely introduced 75 to uh, 10,000 years ago during the Green Saharan period. 
Saharan period. <clears throat> now let's see what it say about the Ibero Mauritians. Um like I said, I'm not gonna read everything, I'm just going to pick out some key stuff. So I say the name of the Ibero Marugian means of Iberia and Mauritania, the latter being a Latin name for Northwest Africa. Pallery coined this term to describe assemblages from the site of La Molia in the belief that the industry extended over the Strait of Gibraltar into the Iberian Peninsula. This theory is now generally discounted, but the name has stuck. In Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, but not in Morocco, the industry is succeeded by the Caspian industry, whose origins are unclear. The Caspian is believed either to have spread into North Africa from Near East or have to evolve from the ibero Morugian. The Caspian culture is the culture center in the Maghreb that lasted from about 8,000 to 27,000 North Africa, okay? That's my son, y'all. I'm sorry if y'all hear him in the background because he the only one up. He too, he is not going to stay out of my room. <laughs> in Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, but not in Morocco, the industry... Okay, we read that. I say in Morocco and Western Algeria, the I. Iber the ibero Morugian is succeeded by the cardio culture after a long hiatus. And these is, I guess, a cross in uh, Europe area. As y'all know, I have Portugal, Italy. Um, so it's showing Italy on here. So it says, um, it talks about Portugal and all of that. Extending to Western Portugal. Okay, so now I want to show y'all my uh, DNA. Y'all tell me, I don't know. It's African Americans, Moors. Okay. So this is my uh, ancient sample results and I wanted to do this I was waiting for my um my my heritage results so I could do it together so I wouldn't have to make two more of these videos uh however this it says this expires in 34 hours I don't know how this website work it was just recommended to me um and I don't know how long they gonna take it said three days today is the third day and it still wasn't ready so I was like, forget it. I'll just do this and then I'll do that video some other time. Because I got other videos that I wanted to do. But when I got my results, it just stopped everything. Uh, I want to talk about what you guys that show manifest. I want to talk about, I told you guys, the show Motherland. And I want to talk about, um, it was something else. Oh, I, I wanted to co iPad go three with y'all. So that's going to be the next few videos coming up. So this is my ancient sample breakdown, okay? And I I have uh, small percentages of the this other stuff, but I was mostly Yoruba peoples, uh, Khoisan Bantu peoples, okay? Now, I was Saka, Sake, okay? I looked that up. It was like an Iranian, the the Saka. Uh, I think I have found something interesting. So I say the Sumerians were closely related to the Sakas, the Ashkenaz. The Ashkenaz are considered to be a direct offshoot from the Gemiri or the Gomer, who were the Sumerians who were closely related with the Sakas, okay? Because I had a comment that was like, you can't possibly have all of that stuff in you. But I'm I'm like, this is what it say. I'm not putting the stuff here, you know. <laughs> um, and it said I had Ashkenazi Jew, right? In my DNA. Okay. Hold on, wait. But it say um, they're also related to the Scythians to, um, who else was it? Uh, 
the Sar Sarmatians. So I had Sarmatian, Sumerian, and Saka on here. If y'all can see, Sumerians was at the bottom, Saka up at the top by Bantu peoples, and then um, you see Sarmatians right there. Have very small percentage of Sarmatian that pulled up. So you can see my modern period is Yoruba. But we're going to start on the inland, in the inside, which says Proto-Bantu, and then we have Saka, 2.1%. And then the outer one, it was Saka, 5.3%, and that was Late Bronze Age, and then Proto-Mongo Horde, 1.9%, uh, Late Bronze Age. And then the Khoisan okay goes back out into the bantu uh -oh, the khoisan hold on we already looked at that one what's that one and then small percentage of sarmatian okay uh it's hard to click these because they get small up here it's a very small percentage of guys navi which i think is like turkey or something i had gaunches eight percent and we're gonna look at what all of this say what all of this like they give you a story this is what i like about this website i was roman hispania 0.5 percent okay hungarian conquest 0.7 percent uh yoruba 3.4 percent more 1.2 percent benzantine 0.3 percent okay i think i clicked all of them that was Saka, 2.4. Gonches, 1.1%. Yoruba, 3.4. Okay, so I think I clicked all of those for y'all. So let's go here. I want to show y'all something. So like on my maps and globes. So we get Europe time lapse. And it showed the Moors in 950 AD. Okay early medieval age it says ancient ancestry the moors okay i'm trying to make it bigger but i guess i can't i was trying to zoom in but i guess i can't for y'all so ancient ancestry it say the moors okay asia we didn't have nothing on asia we go to africa it show us points in africa but then when we go to america it show you know all of these separate points which uh eskimo did pop up on one of my things but you see it got yoruba here brazil there okay so we got aztec on there i wish i could zoom this in oh there it go i don't know why it wasn't zooming in before zoom this in for y'all so um now i as i find my ancestors that i share dna with and stuff like my 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 grandfather's name my gra my great grandfather's name which is my grandmother's father his name was elijah mendez wilson okay i found some uh relatives that i share dna with with the last name mendez um and they had south indigenous um America's South Indigenous DNA. So I don't know. Maybe I'm too far out for it to show up on mine. You know what I mean? So, um, I mean, it shows up. But when I did the original test with Ancestry DNA, of course, they didn't give me any South Indigenous, any you know, anything like that. <clears throat> so let's just keep going here. So, that's, so this tell you, like, if you got ancient stuff in you. So I didn't have Rome, Roman. I had Roman Hispania a little bit, but I had zero percent like Rome. Um, 
didn't have that. And then it was funny because I was 8% Irish, but on here, Britain and Ireland say your historic genetic map of Britain and Ireland. You do not have any ancient. I guess it's ancient. So my DNA that, that I have, it would be modern Ireland or whatever. I don't know. So but I did have ancient Germanic. So, um, which I did have the 2% Germanic on my ancestry, my original ancestry DNA. So the f the thing I like about this is it gives you a historic context. So it says Caesar Augustus moved the northern Roman border 400 kilometers eastwards deep into Germania. The locals were difficult to subjugate and Roman armies were extremely vulnerable to guerrilla attacks. As part of the assimilation process, Romans would take children from Germanic chieftains and escort them to glorious Rome, where they would be brought up as Romans themselves to later assume key roles on on the barbarian frontiers. I watched this show. It's funny because I watched that show, Barbarians, on um, uh, Netflix. Has anybody watched that show? Was they fighting Germany? I'm gonna have to go back and watch because I was I was not paying no. I I don't know. I, I thought that they was um. I don't know who I thought they was, but let me. I'm gonna have to go back and and just get the first episode or something so I can get the context again. Um, and in that show, that's exactly what happened. They took the little boy from the tribe, or whatever, and um. He was raised Roman. Then he came back. He was grown and he was a Roman soldier and um, on the Roman army. And the, yeah, if y'all ain't seen that show, watch it. And then he ended up turning on Rome and they went to war and all of that stuff. But yeah, y'all should watch it. Um, Say one such prince of the Cheruski tribe. I, this is it. Yes, that's who they were. The Cheruski. I remember. <laughs> Look here, I go, y'all. The Cher <laughs> Omg. He was granted Roman citizenship and rose in the ranks to become a Roman knight, serving with distinction in the Great Lyrian Revolt. He was dispatched to Germania to aid the local governor and general Publius uh, Quintilius Vars, Varus in quelling the rebellion of the Germanic tribes. Upon researching his former homeland, Arminius secretly prepared a Germanic revolt against the Romans. That was his name, Arminius. You know what? I did not know that that was the Germans when I was watching that. I don't know why I thought that was like the Irish or something. I don't know what I was thinking. Upon reaching his former homeland, Arminius secretly prepared a Germanic revolt against the Romans themselves. Through his capacity as former Cheruski prince and being an expert in Roman military tactics, he united many Germanic tribes together to prepare. Oh, don't give tell us nothing else. They but they they did a revolt. For some reason, it don't fit. It 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 cut. It keep cutting off. Okay. So let's go to my next one, which was Scythia and Sarmatia, which was, um, I told y'all, Scythia, Sarmatia, the sake, right? So I say, <clears throat> among the earliest, among the earliest peoples to master mounted war warfare, the Scythians are believed to be of Iranian origin, in part due to the similarities of their language and pre-Zoroastrian religion. They were ruled by, and I had Iranian Jew, remember? I had Iranian Jew. They was like, you can't be all of this stuff. I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> Look, it's what the DNA say. <laughs> Even if it's small percentages, because let me tell y'all, we... Y'all, 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 y'all throwing this off as junk DNA, and I just don't think that we should do that. Because let me tell you why. Y'all remember we talked about the movie, the show Creed, how they needed him to go back. He was related to somebody who was, you know, uh, an assassin, but he had the memories because he had it in his DNA. So, 
you got it in your DNA. Embrace it so you can remember it. <laughs> so, in part due to the similarities of their language and prose or Rostrian religion, they were ruled by a wealthy class called the Royal Siths, and Scythian trade routes extended all the way to India and China. They briefly even dominated the Western Iranian plateau, or plateau, which uh, with powers to the border of Egypt. Darius the Great of Persia built the most powerful empire in the world and decided to invade Scythia. He crossed the Bosphorus and defeated the Thracians, crossing the uh, Danube into Scythian territory with 700,000 men, according to the great historian Herodotus. To deal with this threat, the Scythians adopted a scorched earth strategy, strategy while harassing the extensive Persian supply lines. Darius, and this is Ma. Darius the Great from the Bible, Ma. by the way. Hold on Ma. one second, family. Hold on. Okay, I'm back, family. So it says, um, where were we? To deal with this threat, the Scythians adopted a scorched earth strategy while harassing the extensive Persian supply lines. Darius, without success and having sustained heavy losses, retreated back into Persia, which gave the Scythians a reputation of invincibility to nearby peoples. The Sarmatians were a nomadic warring people who lived to the northeast of the Scythians. They used brass. Okay, I don't finish telling us. Some of these things go. Maybe I should refresh the page. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. Let me refresh it and see if it go over because some of them was going over but what's, where was we regional okay see if the information no it still didn't do nothing okay so let's talk about Iberia okay so it says uh, your ancient samples and deep dive results from Iberia plus historical context. So it says the Visigoths were no match for the powerful Muslim army that invaded Hispania in 1711 AD under Tariq ibn Ziyad. In an eight-year campaign, they occupied the entire peninsula except for the northern kingdoms. From the 8th through the 15th centuries, the southern part of the Iberian Peninsula became a center of culture and learning, especially during the Caliphate of Cordoba. The Royal Library possessed um, an, an estimated 500,000 volumes of ancient text in the university in Cordoba, Cordoba became the most celebrated in the world. Advances in science, history, geography, philosophy, and language occurred. New clothing styles, toothpaste, and even deodorant made its way from Baghdad to the Iberian Peninsula. The economy was diverse and successful largely based on trade new crops such as watermelon as soon as i seen watermelon i was like oh yeah they must have been <laughs> they must have been black <laughs> i'm joking i don't know do y'all do y'all like watermelon white people and stuff everybody all the other races i don't know it became a stereo i'm, I'm making a joke i don't know if y'all know i'm not being racist i'm it became a stereotype for black people to like watermelon so that's why i say you know, they used to depict us with watermelon in our mouth and all of that stuff. So that's why I say, oh, they must have been black. They brought watermelon. <laughs> it's a joke. Y'all lighten up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Advances in science, history, geography, philosophy, and language occurred. New clothing styles, toothpaste, and even deodorant made its way from Baghdad to the Iberian Peninsula. The economy was diverse and successful largely based on trade. New crops such as watermelon, banana, rice, hard wheat, and eggplant were introduced. The population was very diverse, where the indigenous Hispano-Roman majority of 7 million, million continued to speak a variant of Latin with Arabic influence. Emirs and caliphates of El Andalus were the sons of concubines. Okay, and then I don't think that one go over either. I don't know why this is stuck for some reason on this one. Because it was one that was going over. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, now haplogroup, royal ties. I have I was related to a lot of royal families, and we can do a separate video on that. If y'all want a separate video on the royal families that I'm related to, which I'm gonna show y'all here, but like the people, like on here it don't tell you the people because they want you to pay more money, which I'm not doing. This was I didn't pay nothing for this, and I'm not gonna pay. $250 to see the royal families that I'm related to. No. So what I did was I just took the haplogroup, which was H, and I googled all the royal people with the, with the haplogroup H, and it came up. So if y'all want to do a video on that, separate video, because that'll probably take a while. I will tell y'all, though, I was related to King James, I believe it was the second, or was it the third? King James, the one who ruled Ireland, Scotland, and England. I was related to King James Haplogroup H. And y'all know, they say he was a black man. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I, uh, one other person I was also related to was uh, Prince Philip, who just passed away, Queen Elizabeth's husband. He was the Prince of Wales. Y'all know I was 3% Wales. So, I was like, what the crap? crap <laughs> okay so let's look at this the y dna i i had um i was related to pharaoh ramesses through my through the male line y'all can see this is Uh oh, I think it was Pharaoh Ramesses. Now it ain't popping up. <clears throat> it was Ramesses. Okay, I'm gonna just tell y'all because it ain't popping up. And then these was all all the haplogroups that I had, and then um. Yeah, Ramesses the third. Ancient Egypt, E one B one A, Ramesses the third. Okay. And you see, I had an early colonial Mexico City slave trade victim who I had DNA that matched to. And I told y'all I had people who was indigenous south who I was related to. 9.09. .09. I could, they could just possibly be relatives and I never went through that line. But, um, let's see. So my MT DNA was where most of my mitochondrial DNA was where the haplogroup H was, which was where most of the royal families they say that I'm connected to, which it says I need to upgrade to Zeus to uncover this. And it was, I, I was going to do it. But when I went and looked and it was $249, I said, geez. So it say the Romanovs. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm developing a call from somewhere. I don't know. Greek royalty. Romanian royalty. Portuguese royalty. Spanish royalty. Sardinian royalty, which I had Sardinia on there. Grand Duke of Tuscany. I had DNA with a knight from Tuscany, Lebanon. Okay, and I had Lebanese on the last video in my DNA. French royalty, Belgian royalty, Prussian royalty, Bohemian royalty, Holy Roman Empire, Austrian royalty, Swedish royalty, Danish royalty, English royalty, and then I'm related to some, some famous people. 
So I don't know if this is saying I'm related. I assume that this is saying that I'm somehow related to all of these royal houses, which you know, all of the royals are related. So somehow I got some DNA. But you know what? I will tell y'all, my family is RH negative. Okay, I don't know if I said, been telling y'all that. My family <laughs> is RH negative. My sister is O negative. I'm positive. I'm A positive. But my family is negative. That means that I have negative DNA dormant within me, okay? I wonder what my sister's DNA would say since she is negative. Since she O negative. And it's 9-11 as I'm saying that. I should get her a DNA test just because I'm curious. Um, but yeah, my family is RH negative. And as you know, most of the royal families are negative DNA. Let me see. I'm just see something right quick. Okay. Okay, too much to look through. Are the royal family RH negative? Royal blue buds in the RH negative phenomenon. The royal families in Europe pride themselves on their bloodline called the Merovingian bloodline. The uniqueness of the European royalty bloodline could be tied to the RH negative bloods as it seems to be predominant. So my family is RH negative. So, I'm possibly tied to all of these royal houses. I told y'all I'm related to King James. Okay. And I wonder why I got such a connection to the King James Bible. <laughs> I was King James only for a long time. So, I started realizing that they was hiding stuff in different translations. But, um, yeah. So I was related to all of these royal families. Okay, and then spotlight DNA. My spotlight DNA was the gaunches. Okay, so let's say the gaunches, the mysterious gaunches arrived on the Canary Islands at at least 3,000 years ago and originated from the Berber region of North Africa. They brought goats, pigs. Again, we Berber, North Africa, more. Uh, they brought goats, pigs, and dogs with them from the mainland and are thought to have largely relied off goat herding and grain crops. No metal has been found in the Gaunches settlement, so all the tools were made of wood, stone, and bone. Jewelry was crafted from bone, clay beads, and shells. Many people lived in caves or circular houses made of stone which that with thatched roofs. Nine kingdoms were formed on the Tenerife. And during times of war, combat ensued using wooden javelins, maces, obsidian knives, and shields from the dragon tree. In some areas, people are believed to have worshipped the sun and the mother goddess. Now, y'all know all we teach about is the mother goddess over here. So, I found that interesting. I said, oh, that must be where it come from. Way back in the DNA, eh? <laughs> Look, at See, that's what I said. You don't want to disregard your DNA. Look, because what I'm teaching about the mother goddess today, come find out my ancestors worship the mother goddess. And even though this is it, well, actually, it did say I had like 13% plus and then like 1%. It was like 14% gone, but I don't know, really know 14% compared to what? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, this thing also did say, for some reason, it didn't pop back up because I think they made a mistake and showed me that. And now they want me to pay for it to uncover it again. Um, that I was a DNA match to a priest, uh, an ancient Egyptian priest called Kanum Naket, I think. He had a brother. They had a tomb that they uncovered called the two brothers y'all can look this up i probably won't do it on this video because we already getting it kind of long um but it said i had 98 percent more of a match than anybody else using the site so i found that interesting i was at 98 percent i'm egyptian look <laughs> so um <clears throat> They brought goats, pigs, and dogs from within the mainland. Okay, we read all of that. The mother goddess. In Tener Tenerife, during the summer solstice, the Gonches would kill livestock and throw them into a fire as an offering to the gods. 
Just 600 meters south of the northern coast of the Grand Canary Island lie the caves of Valeron. This was the largest pre-Hispanic collective granary predated Roman times and was used by the locals until the island was conquered by the Spanish at the end of the 15th century. It was dug out of the cliffs using stone and wooden tools and hidden from the sea with extremely steep access slopes. Sorry, I want to just look at my son. Let's see what he doing. Oh, he getting out his seat. Darn. <laughs> I was just making sure because he sometimes he would try to open the window. We find looking at him. Each cave had doors made of wood or stone, which would protect the granary content contents. Numerous idols, paintings, ceramic bones, and ashes have been found within the cave system as well. I'm sorry about the, the smoke detectors. Y'all know that I got to change the whole system out, which I have not done. But I did figure out that I could turn them off from the power box. And I keep cutting them off. I think my husband keep going down there cutting it on because sometimes he be restarting everything if something go out or something. And he keep cutting it back on. So I'll be having to go down there and cut it. So please disregard the beep. Because I cut it off. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to go. I just heard it. So I'm going to have to go back down and cut it off. I didn't realize that it was beeping. Like I said, this is, we live here. So if it starts beeping a lot, we probably won't notice. Because um, it was dug out of the cliffs using stone and wooden tools. And hidden from the sea with extremely steep access slopes. Each cave had doors made of wood or stone which would protect the granary contents. N numerous idols, paintings, ceramic bones, and ashes have been found within the cave system as well. Over a dozen uh, similar... Oh, hold on, sorry. Over a dozen similar caves have been found on the same islands, although this cave complex was the largest distributed on eight levels with over 350 storage chambers. The pyramids of Gumar are six rectangular pyramid-shaped terraces built from lava stone and on the island of the Tenerife. The famous adventurer Thor hypothesized that the pyramids formed a temporal uh, and geographic stopping point of voyages between the ancient Egyptian and Mayan civilizations. However, these pyri pyramids have more recently been dated to the 19th century. They had been in reality constructed by the local population using classical method, methods of materials and constructed as found in other sites of the tenor life, tenor life. Interestingly, the outside wall aligns to the sunset on summer solstice, whereas the stairs of the western side face the rising sun on winter solstice. The border edge covered up a natural lava cave which has yielded gaunchous artifacts dating from 600 to 1000 AD which you can see um I was two percent matches on a lot of these one percent match there two percent two percent two percent So it says the conquest of the Canary Islands took place between 1402 and 1496 by Castilian nobility and the Spanish crown itself. The first phase was carried out by several Norman nobles, including Jean de Betancourt. He owned textile factories and dye works, which greatly benefited from the Orkel Lilkin found in the Canaries. By 1405, the islands of Lanzarote was captured as the native kings of the island surrendered, leaving Betancourt, the absolute owner of the island. The island of El Jairo fell in 1405 as there was no resistance by the scattered Gante population who in turn were largely sold as slaves. This island was re repopulated by Norman and Castilian settlers. The island of La Gomorra was incorporated as a fiefdom but have frequent uprisings these were snuffed out and 200 rebels were sold into slavery in spain the largest islands of gran canaria la palma and tenerife were conquered as part of the conquista realinga operating and supported directly by the spanish crown and the conquest came to a completion okay so I had Crusader Knights. 
Okay, Crusader Knights, which was the Tuscan. It said it was a 1% match to Crusader Knight Tuscan Lebanon. So it said that I had Lebanese. And like I said, it was a lady in the comments and she basically was saying I was crazy because I thought I had all of this stuff in me. And I'm like, I do. <laughs> like, mainly I know, and this is where we talk about synchronicities, y'all, because if you go through my videos, a lot of these people I've talked about, like, we did a video in the Bedouins. So to see that in my DNA was like, you know, um, we did videos on a lot of these places, a lot of these people, I mean. Um, now, one other place that was interesting that I had in my DNA that wasn't on, it was on the last one, um, was Magdalenian which would which is part of portugal um but you know it was me we talk about mary magdalene and i'm wondering if that tie into that i haven't done no research yet but it was magdalenian okay magdalenian and that was portugal so let's read this because i've been doing a lot of reading i think i think we're going to do the timelines, uh, and then that's that's pretty much the, probably the genetic social groups, and that's it. I'm going to wrap this up. The Crusader states, also known as Outrimmer, were created after the First Crusade as a way to keep hold of territory gains by Christian armies in the Middle East. Crusader castles were built all over Outremir to serve not only as defensive structures, but also as administrative and economic centers designed to last for many years to come. The four small Outremir states were the Kingdom of Jerusalem, the County of Edessa, the country of Tripoli, and the Principality of Antioch. The analysis focuses on the former Phoenician and later Roman colony of Sidon, Seda, which renamed an Arab which remained an Arab hands until uh, 1100 when King Bob I of Jerusalem and King Sergered I of Norway captured it. Um, I was 1% Norway. Okay. The city was then recaptured by the masterful Saladian in 18, 1187 only to be retaken by German crusaders. I was 2% German in 1197. It remained a key crusader stronghold until the uh, Saracen invasion in 1249 when it was destroyed. This series of exchange presented the backdrop for the ill-fated Seventh Crusade. The Seventh Crusade was led by Louis of France from 1248 to 1254. Jerusalem had recently fallen and there was no popular enthusiasm at the time for a new crusade as Europe was involved in many internal conflicts. Bella of Hungary was rebuilding his kingdom from ashes after the devastating Mongol invasion of Europe. Henry III of England was struggling at home and Hoken of Norway <coughs> was in the midst of a civil war. Louis was almost alone in declaring a new crusade to the east, and in 1248 sailed from Agus Mortis and Marsalis with an army of 15,000. They sailed for Cyprus, but Louis decided to first focus on attacking Egypt. While marching towards Cairo, Louis' main force was attacked by Mameluk, Baybars, and defeated. Okay. And talk about the castle of Lewis a little bit. Um, I say afterward, the castle was left in the hands of hospitalers and an elite military organized base in Jerusalem, which later relocated to the island of Rhodes in 1260. And the Mongols seized the city and castles. Later that year, the Knights Templar took charge of the land castle, which re uh, which was reconfirmed in 1283. This would all change in 1291 the, when the Templars led an evacuation of Sidon. Okay. My second family. Okay. So let's wrap this up so I can get to them. Okay. Oh. 
Oh, did we? Oh, we didn't do. Did we do the mummies? Egyptian mummies. We didn't. They actually do talk about it on here. Look, I'm just ready to be done reading. <laughs> like, mummies from the middle. Okay. Uh, late. From the middle, late in Palatimic kingdoms. In 1907, two mummies were discovered in Deir Rafay, Egypt, in a tomb belonging to a governor and his sons from the 12th dynasty almost 4,000 years ago. The tomb group is one of the best preserved and best known burials of the Egyptian Middle Kingdom. Although the mummies were heavily decayed, the skeletons were still preserved. So, Kanum Nak Nakit was about 40 years old and Nakit Ankh about 60. The two mummies were found to be brothers with the same mother but different fathers. This is confirmed by identical mtDNA and the detected differences in the Y chromosomes. Both suffer from osteoarthritis and dental attrition. Kanum Naakit and Kyphoscolius had kyphoscoliosis and Naak Unk had lung lesions from a, from San Numonosius. And it says that uh, our sample match 98% closer than other users. And the late period of ancient Egypt lasted from 6, 664 BC to 3... Okay. I think that's another mummy or something. So I had, I was, had ties to two Egyptians, which was Pharaoh Ramesses and the brothers. So genetic social groups. Oh, I think this also give you a timeline. So the lepers was on here, which I don't know what lepers I was related to. Crusaders, mummies, Yoruba peoples, Khoisan, um, Bantu peoples, Elan Cave, South Africa. And then they wanted me to upgrade to get the rest of these groups. They wanted me to pay. Oh, and this one is a knight. A knight, I could pay for that. King, king, I ain't paying for that. <laughs> Look. So let's go back to the timeline. So I want to just show you. Here it is. The timelines really quick. How they do it. And they said upgrade needed. They won't give me this information. Which I believe that. It was from America. Because I had. I don't know. On the map. It was. I ain't even going to get into it. Because. <laughs> I could have just been tripping. Looking at it wrong. But um. Yeah, so say upgrade needed to tell me the 820 AD. Some of this stuff, I need to upgrade for it to tell me exactly what it is. Okay. I had DNA matching the St. Martin slave. Yoruba peoples. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I wanted to show y'all. But they, I wanted to show y'all how Yoruba was tied to the Moors, and how my it did say my on map was it maps and clothes or regional. My Europe time lapse is say ancient ancestry Moors. Okay. Now, I don't know why is it just saying that. Okay. Now, I have more on another one of my list. Um, it said more Mosebite, Berber, etc. But it was from the website that we did the video on the last time. But that one has so many, like, breakdowns and stuff that I couldn't even keep up. This one was much more simpler. It told us a lot of stuff that that one did. Um, 
but without like all of the hassle okay more clear straight to the point but what do you guys think about this also when i typed in yoruba or moors stuff was popping up i haven't really done a lot of um research but it was the whole website i say the evidence for my okay just wait one second i'm almost done see they are getting up now it's 9 30 let me finish <laughs> and they are already starting so i say i had large calories okay so cold so codo caliphate all had large cal calvary sorry who researchers claim are from a singular source. So you study the facial features of the Moors and you see Yorubic and Northern Nigerian features. Okay. One sec. So family, I'm just going in this with my final statements while my kids is up, if, as you guys can hear in the video. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to give y'all my final statements. We're going to wrap this up. So it's a whole thread talking about Yorubas is more, it's okay. Um, saying that the language is even from the Middle East is not, I don't know. I haven't, like I said, I'm just now learning this. Um, but we could clearly read it. They said that Yoruban people have the Mauritanian DNA. What was it? What, what do we read? Okay, hold on. Let's go back. Oh, Lord. I don't know where it went. However, y'all seen that. Okay, we ain't got to go back back to it again. Okay. But, so what do y'all think about that? It's African American Moors. I said my ancient ancestry was definitely Moors. As Yoruba people descended from Moors, basically. Shalom, family. Love you guys. Till we meet again.